from Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Melinda Akilami. Hello and welcome. At least three people, including the chairman of the Nigeria Atomic Energy Commission, killed following an explosion in a gas plant in Jukun local government area of Kaduna State. Nigeria Air Force says scores of insurgents killed in the Sambisa Forest area in Borno State vows continued airstrikes to eliminate remnants of the insurgents in the northeast. How has Nigeria fared on the international scene in the past year? That's our focus tonight as we continue our assessment of government activities in 2019. And thousands march in the funeral procession for Iranian General Qasim Soleimani assassinated in a US airstrike. Plus, business and sports. On business news tonight, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission announces over 70% increase in electricity tariffs, orders immediate implementation of directive by distribution companies. On Sports News, world number one, Rafa Nadal leads Spain to victory over Georgia at the inaugural ATP Cup. We begin with a tragic incident that occurred in Kaduna State today where three people, including the chairman of the National Atomic Energy Commission, were killed and several others injured after a gas plant explosion at the Sabontesha area of Jukun local government area. Eyewitnesses say that the explosion occurred due to a leakage from one of the gas tanks while operators of the retail plant were dispensing gas to customers. This is Sabo Ntasha, a community located in the outskirts of Kaduna Metropolis. The usual piece of the area took a flight on Saturday afternoon as an explosion from an illegal gas plant sent residents into panic. No fewer than three lives were lost in the incident, including that of a professor who was in the neighborhood to have a haircut. The incident is coming a few days after the Department of Petroleum Resources sealed about four illegal gas plants in the Kaduna state capital. Although this is the first time such an incident will occur in the Sabuntasha area of Kaduna state, some of the residents who spoke to Channel's television call on government to ban illegal gas retail outlets to forestall their recurrence. We are calling on the government to ban illegal sales of gas. Anybody that wants to get gas for his household should go to the filling station. Because what really happened here is something that my words cannot describe. A lot of people died here. The Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, alongside the Director of the State Fire Service, visit the scene of the incident and express condolences to the families of victims. It is something that requires investigation, deep investigation for that matter. But I want to assure you that as a government, as a responsible government, we will do all that we can uh, to ensure that we check uh, some of these practices. We came to the scene and uh, we discovered that uh, the explosion took place in a compact place where there are shops, other shops, uh, like the barbing saloon, mm, there is a plumbing material shop there, there is uh, a boutique there, and then the uh, vendor, the gas retailer. The gas plant explosion again highlights the need for relevant government agencies to ensure that safety regulations are adhered to to avert loss of lives and property. 
A similar incident happened down south in Akwaibom State, where a fishing settlement in Ibeno local government area was also gutted by fire, destroying no fewer than 2,000 small houses and property worth millions of naira. The settlement, popularly known as the Yoruba Quarters, was completely razed while the fishermen are already counting their losses. In a swift response to the plight of the victims, the state governor, Odom Emmanuel, promised to provide necessary assistance to those affected. He also sympathized with the victims and assured them of his administration's commitment to their welfare. To security matters now, the Nigerian Air Force says it's not slowing down in the onslaught against insurgents terrorizing the Northeast and would ensure that they are sniffed out of their hideouts. The Air Force explains that its latest strike hit scores of Boko Haram terrorists at Bula Belo community on the fringes of the Sambisa Forest in Bornu State. According to the Air Force spokesperson, Air Commodore Ibikunde Daramola, an Air Force intelligence and surveillance aircraft spotted a gun truck under a tree with scores of terrorists converged on the outskirts of the settlement. Some of the insurgents were seen pushing another vehicle to a location under another tree, apparently preparing for an attack against nearby troops' position. He adds that the troops have resolved to sustain efforts to completely destroy all remnants of the terrorists in the northeast. In Kogi State, Governor Yahaya Belo has directed security agencies to find those behind Thursday night's attack, where at least 19 people were killed in Tawari community. The governor also warned that anyone not in the ambition of causing crisis in the state would have themselves to blame, as his administration will do everything to protect lives and properties. Governor Baylor appealed to the residents to be calm and law-abiding as he directed a team of government officials led by the state governor to go for an on-the-spot assessment of the situation in the community. So they are both criminals. Yeah. Irrespective of who you are, anywhere in this country, as far as you have blood running through you, you must condemn this act. Mm. Exactly. It's barbaric. Yes, exactly. It's not something humans do. So whoever or group of persons who probably planned it, sponsored it, because money would be involved, you don't kill free. Yeah. Nigerians must naturally condemn it. And perpetrators need to be found out, prosecuted and then get the consequences of their actions according to the laws of the land. Because we have a law. The law must be effective. Still in the northern part of the country, the Fulanese and Kona tribes in Taraba State have agreed to live in harmony after several months of crisis, which led to casualties on both sides. The leaders of the two tribes agreed to forgive each other and live together as it was before the crisis broke out. Meanwhile, the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuka Miratai, says the age-long land dispute between the army and residents of Seti in Taraba State has also been resolved. The conflict between the Kona and Fulanese in Yelowa Abari town, which extended to Adokola local government area of Taraba state, has left death in its wake and many displaced. Previous attempts by the state government and security agencies to resolve the issue ended in futility. But following a peaceful protest by the people to say no to disunity, a ceasefire agreement has now been reached. The traditional ruler of Kona, who doubles as the representative of the state government, advocates the need for unity. Nothing is greater than peace. We do not need to be covering up those who perpetrate heinous crimes. If we do that, it makes the crime and criminality continue. A peaceful collaboration is what I will forever succumb to. Henceforth, government will not rest until any perpetrator who commits a crime is brought to book. The meeting ends with both parties agreeing to live together and go about their daily activities peacefully. Both the Fulani and, uh, Mum, uh, and the Kona, we have seen the achievement. We are now living peacefully. 
both the Kona and the Fulani to put heads together and forget of their differences and become one so that people should not come in between them to tarnish the image so that our land should develop. Meanwhile, relief has come for another group in the state as a lingering land dispute between the army and resident of Seriti in Gashaka local government area has been resolved. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Blate, holds this community in high esteem. And as such, the lingering problem that has been on for over many, many years in this unit that was yet to be solved has just recently been solved with the permission granted by the chief of army staff to let go of the encroached barrack land and for us to take over possession of the compensated land that was given by the Gashaka Local Government Council in collaboration with the Gashaka Emirate Council. The traditional ruler thanks the army for letting go. On behalf of the people of Gashaka, local government, and the entire people of Serti, especially the would be side that were affected, uh, encroaching into the land of the Nigerian army, the government of Tarabaste have made provision to compensate the army, and uh, we thank God for the amicable resolution of the, the issue. It is expected that the restoration of peace in these communities will be permanent as the people hope to live their normal lives without the disruption caused by disputes. turned out to be a challenging year for Nigeria's foreign policy. She sparred off with a few close allies and had to defend her citizens abroad. In continuation of our review of the previous year, our foreign affairs correspondent Amarachu Bani highlights events that strengthened or weakened Nigeria's foreign policy. The year 2019 began for Nigeria with a focus on the upcoming elections. Weeks at the start of the election, the government indicted the Chief Justice of the nation, removing and replacing him days later. The United States, the UK and the European Union all spoke with one voice condemning what they called the violation of the rule of law. Months later, news of Nigeria signing the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement almost went unnoticed in the news. Later in the year, the Sefer Franc was exchanged by Francophone West Africa for the ECO, with Ghana considering joining. Nigeria is yet to respond. But perhaps the greatest test for the country in 2019 was the xenophobic attacks targeted at Nigerians in South Africa in the month of September. The federal government, through the Minister of Foreign Affairs, tried to put up a strong front promising stern reactions to the South African and, uh, government and towing the path of diplomacy. Nigerians, on the other hand, were already taking the law into their hands. The government felt the 74th UN General Assembly was an opportunity for Nigeria to shine on the international scene. President Buhari, in his speech at the Assembly, called for better economic partnerships with Africa and played up Nigeria's success at social infrastructure. Current attempts to help develop Africa by industrial countries are uncoordinated and plainly incremental. We have the skills, the manpower, and the natural resources, but in many instances, we lack the capital. Hence my plea for industrial countries to take a long-term view of Africa. We request you to come and partner with us to develop the continent for the benefit of all. While the government may have been tempted to pat itself on the back, it was slammed with criticism of human rights by the United States concerning the handling of the hashtag revolution now convener, Omoyele Shoure. The United States owes it a duty to protect its own foreign policy interests, which is the advancement and protection of democratic values the world over. 
While the government defended that Nigeria did not have to answer to any country, Shawara was eventually released before Christmas. The year did not go by without former ambassadors calling for review of the nation's foreign policy. 2020 promises to be another year of diplomatic adventure between Nigeria and her African partners with the start of the AFCFTA. This may also be the year careful consideration is put into foreign policy and government response to international issues is better recognized. Amarachi Ubani, Channel Television News. In part two, after the break, more on our review of 2019 activities of government. And we have a former Minister of External Affairs, Professor Bolaji Akiyemi, to look at how Nigeria fared last year. Plus, find out how the people of Jos are coping with the extreme weather conditions in the Plateau State capital. Stay with us.